Emperor Domitian once lived in ancient Rome. Born on October 24, 51 AD, he rose to the throne in 81 AD, following in the footsteps of his father, Vespasian, and brother, Titus. Domitian was the last of the Flavian dynasty to reign Rome. This was the emperor who attempted to assassinate the beloved Apostle John. In this video, I will discuss the horrible fate that awaits him for his actions. Now, destined to a terrible fate, the Apostle John was on his way to Rome from the ancient city of Ephesus. According to legend, he was to face a terrible trial in which he would be plunged into a cauldron of scorching, boiling oil. But, in a miraculous turn of events, he emerged uninjured, his body unaffected by the flames, a monument to divine intervention. However, his struggle was far from done. John sought peace in solitude after being banished to the lonely Isle of Patmos by Emperor Domitian's order. He wrote the mystical and prophetic book of Revelation among the rocky cliffs and roaring waves, a vision of what was to come that would reverberate throughout the ages. John's exile ended and Domitian died and Nerva ascended to the imperial throne. He was summoned from the depths of seclusion, and his persistent faith and loyalty to his ideals earned him the new ruler's mercy. Domitian, often known as Domitianus, was a monarch renowned for his firm and unwavering leadership. Some say he was vicious, while others say he was efficient, perhaps he was both. He exercised his control with an iron grip, ensuring that his orders were carried out without question. However, Domitian's dominating style did not appeal to everyone, particularly the Senate. He struggled hard with them, limiting their influence and asserting his own control over the empire. His dictatorial ways sparked tension and scandal, dividing him from Rome's noble senators. Emperor Domitian's reign was distinguished by both wealth and upheaval, leaving a legacy of power and strife for future generations to recall. Domitian, in the shadow of his father and brother's leadership, played a tiny, primarily ceremonial role in the magnificent fabric of Roman politics. However, fate had different ideas for him. When Domitian's brother died, the Praetorian Guard named him the new emperor, placing him in a position of enormous authority and responsibility. Domitian's reign spanned the whole Roman Empire for 15 years, making it the longest since Tiberius' time. During his reign, he made an everlasting impression on the empire's history. Domitian boldly fortified the empire's economy in order to strengthen it. He revalued Roman coins, assuring their stability and prosperity. His vision went beyond the city walls of Rome, he expanded the empire's borders, strengthening its defenses against external dangers. Perhaps his most lasting legacy is the splendor he bequeathed on Rome. He launched a massive development program with the goal of restoring the city to its former splendor, reviving its crumbling monuments and magnificent sites. Despite the accomplishments, difficulties arose. Wars raged on the distant borders of Britain, where his faithful general Agricola launched a campaign to conquer the savage territories of Caledonia, now known as Scotland. Across the Danube, in Dacia, he was unable to defeat the strong King Decebalus. Domitian's rule was characterized by a firm authoritarian grip. He created a personality cult around himself by using religious, military, and cultural propaganda. By taking the role of everlasting censor, he hoped to influence public and private morals, leaving an indelible mark on the fabric of Roman society. Domitian's reign was a tale of two sides. While popular with the common people and the troops, his iron-fisted rule earned him the moniker of tyrant in the eyes of the Roman Senate. This significant divide of opinion would eventually influence his legacy. Domitian adhered steadfastly to the ancient traditions of Roman religion, ensuring that historical rituals and ideals were maintained during his reign. His faith in the divine nature of the Flavian dynasty remained firm, and he went to considerable measures to strengthen the bond between his family and Jupiter, the principal deity. This was most likely the reason, he despised Christians at the time and was willing to kill as many as possible, but Apostle John proved to be a difficult nut to crack for him. One of his most famous achievements was the comprehensive rebuilding of the Temple of Jupiter on Capitoline Hill, 
which served as a great monument to the grandeur and majesty of the god king. But his love to Jupiter did not stop there. He built a simple chapel dedicated to Jupiter Conservator near where he sought refuge at a period of distress. Later, when his power grew, he replaced it with a more impressive structure honoring Jupiter Custos. Despite his admiration for Jupiter, it was the goddess Minerva who captured Domitian's affection. A shrine to her adorned his own bedroom, demonstrating his intense personal affection. She ornamented his currency in a variety of ways, and he even established Legio I Minervaea in her honor. Domitian's unswerving devotion to these ancient deities aimed to safeguard Rome's holy traditions and strengthen the divine validity of his authority. Domitian revived the old tradition of imperial cult, which had withered under his father Vespasian's rule. In an audacious gesture, his first act as emperor was to raise his adored brother, Titus, to the position of a deity, this was only the beginning of his efforts to deify his family members, after their deaths, his young son and niece, Julia Flavia, were also honored in the celestial pantheon. While some accounts suggest Domitian legally bestowed upon himself the title, Dominus Edi Deus, Lord and God, historians disagree on the legitimacy of these assertions. Domitian reputedly rejected such titles throughout his reign, and no official documentation or coinage has been unearthed to back up these claims. Some say that these titles were simply flattery from people hoping to gain the emperor's favor. Nonetheless, Domitian spared no expense in honoring his family's celestial status. He built a great dynastic mausoleum on the Quirinal, where Vespasian's ancient residence formerly stood, and finished the temple of Vespasian and Titus, which was dedicated to the worship of his deified father and brother. To commemorate the Flavian dynasty's military achievements, he commissioned the construction of the Templum Devorum and the Templum Fortuna Redux, as well as the completion of the iconic Arch of Titus. Domitian used these great structures and festivities to seal his family's history as divine rulers, assuring their eternal place among Rome's gods. Domitian's rule ended tragically in 96, when he was assassinated by court officials. In the blink of an eye, authority switched, and his trusty advisor Nerva assumed leadership. Emperor Domitian's life ended tragically in the midst of unrest and instability. Domitian dealt a lethal blow on Stephanus, the emperor's trusty attendant, while they were fighting, leaving Stephanus terminally wounded on the floor. Stephanus died shortly after the altercation from his injuries, his life dwindling away as the shadows grew. Domitian's body, once mighty and majestic, was taken away on a lowly bier, robbed of the majesty that an emperor deserves. His devoted carer, Phyllis, took charge of his remains and oversaw his unceremonious cremation. In a heartfelt act of memory, she mixed his ashes with those of his cherished niece, Julia, fulfilling his final wishes. The prophecy of his death, whispered in the shadows and spoken in secret, came true when the sun reached its peak. Cassius Dio's writings imply that the assassination was spontaneous, although Suetonius describes a methodically premeditated scheme. Details emerge about locked doors and hidden swords, creating a tapestry of mystery and mistrust. Domitia Longina's suspected involvement among the accused raises questions, given her persistent love to Domitian even after his death. The emperor's protectors, the Praetorian Guard, continue to have an ambiguous function. Were they involved in the scheme or just witnesses to the tragedy? The events surrounding Domitian's death are shrouded in mystery, prompting historians to question the exact nature of his death and the legacy he left behind. Domitian's story, however, did not end with his death. The Senate, desperate to erase his memory, sentenced him to oblivion. However, writers such as Tacitus, Pliny the Younger, and Suetonius painted a worse picture of Domitian as a brutal and paranoid ruler. However, history is a patchwork of many perspectives. Modern scholars have provided a different perspective. They see Domitian as a clever and efficient ruler, rather than a crazed tyrant. His artistic, economic, and political endeavors established the groundwork for the subsequent tranquil era in the second century. I appreciate your viewing.